Okay, so with the last class I have shown you the efficacies of transmission electron microscope in which I discussed about the resolution and the depth of field. I have discussed how to use this microscope to obtain different kind of images. Today I am going to show you the real microscope. This microscope is in house in the department of material science engineering of IIT Kanpur. We have been using this microscope for the last 5 years. So, I am going to show you first actual microscope different parts of the microscope and then describe how we can use it. So, in a transmission electron microscope is basically and versatile in equipment in the sense that we can use this machine for many such analysis of materials and get information from starting from the diffraction to composition or spectroscopic analysis to high resolution microscopy. So, obviously microscope will have a basic features and a lot of attachments to get information on the spectroscopic related things and also the other aspects which I will discuss slowly. So, in a real microscope we start from the top basically in a electron microscope the source is electron. So, electrons are to be generated by certain means electrons can be generated by many means one way of generating electron is to use thermionic emission of tungsten filament or the lanthanum hexaboid filaments otherwise we can use field emission guns. So, all the modern day high resolution electron microscope has field emission guns. In this microscope the top part is basically the gun you can see there is a power cable coming and sitting on the gun and that assembly actually contains a hair fin tungsten filament. This is nothing but an just like a tungsten filament in a incandescent bulb we see in the real homes. So, tungsten in the form of wire less than about 1.1 millimeter is bent <coughs> to create a hairpin like structure and then if we apply a voltage or if you to heat up the tungsten filament it emits electrons. So, therefore, that is the main source of electron but problem is in thermodynamic accumulation is that because it is a tungsten filament. So, therefore, the electrons which are coming on the surface may have different energies. So, that is why many times we use another kind of hairpin filament known as lanthanum hexaborate. Lanthanum hexaborate crystals are actually grown along 110 directions and these crystals then can be used to get emission from the uh, by heating. So, they are uh, much better than tungsten in the sense that the emission is much more stable energy spread of the electrons is less and the brightness of the beam is higher. And in modern day technologies we use the field, field emission guns or called FEG. So, field emission guns are again tungsten filament grown or single crystal tungsten grown along 110 directions and then we have a very fine tip less than about 0.01 millimeter and if we apply a very high electrical field of the order of 10 to the power 6 volts per centimeter between this filament and another electrode. So, uh, the anode then we can actually force electrons to tunnel through this electrode and come out as a electron. So, that these are the uh, sources which we normally use in this microscope we use tungsten filament or lab 6 depending on our uses. So, in a FEG we need to have a very high uh, vacuum system because FEG filaments needs to be very clean contamination free. So, therefore, if you want to use a FEG filament this top portion of the gun needs to be evacuated to a level of 10 to the minus 10 tor. So, that is basically additional cost um, that is why many of the microscopes normal standard microscope do not have fake column otherwise one can actually heat up the tungsten flam filament in a fake microscope. So, that any oxide which forms the surface can be removed. What are maybe the way the cost is very high for tungsten filaments. Now, once the electrons are generated they need to be focused they are focused by set of condenser lenses which are situating here. So, normally in a normal microscope there will be two condenser lenses and in a microscopes where you need to have a convergent electron diffraction you can you need to have three lenses what is known as a extra lens is nothing but a condenser mini lens which can force the electrons to get 
con uh, converts into a, into a small spot and that is required for scanning transmission electron microscopy purposes. We have built in here and in a, in a microscope normally the most important part followed by this uh, the, uh, the illumination section that is the condenser lenses source and the condenser lenses is the objective lens and you can see here this is a sample holder and this is the objective lens and objective lens is basically just like a twin lens here it is it is a ultra twin lens or u twin lens it sample is inserted between these two twin pole pieces and then the, the, the beams which falls on a sample are passing to the sample they are actually focused by the objective lens to either generate an image or generate the diffraction pattern by a set of lenses which are sitting here they are called intermediate lenses and the projector lenses. Obviously electrons cannot be seen in a microscopes so one needs to have a viewing skin and you, you if you look at any microscope this is the viewing skin with the binoculars and viewing skin is nothing but a fluorescent screen made of zinc sulphide on which if electron falls can create light and our eyes human eyes can only see light cannot see electrons if the electron falls in eyes you, you in fact you will be blinded. So that is why this is fully protected that is there is a glass lead based glass which will not allow anything come out of the sample. So remember this is a very hazardous equipment unless and it is protected. So that is why all these things are actually uh, nicely covered and you only you cannot tamper about you only view the skin and do all kinds of analysis. And in a normal modern day microscopes the panels are like this they are very small in which you can have a very less number of buttons which can allow us to control the microscopes and it is attached to a computer, computer controls all the mechanisms in the in the microscopes. In fact microscope control like the valves, vacuum systems and the height lens and everything is controlled by that. So let me also tell you that as the electrons comes from the from the source they need to be accelerated for any electron microscope because that only energy of the electron can be increased. This is done by a high tension tank. So high tension tank actually steps up the voltage from normal supplied voltage 220 kilo volts in, a, in, in our country to about 200 kilo volts in the microscopes. Thus microscope which can actually use higher voltages like 300, 400 or maybe 1000 volt, kilo volts. So depending on the, uh, the kind of microscope which you have you need to have a very large uh, tank. In this microscope which is basically dedicated high resolution microscope you have a, uh, the objective lens which is separately cooled so that temperature of the objective lens cannot be increased so much that focal length can be changed. Other than these lenses we have apertures, apertures basically used to select a particular you know uh, beam or basically to dictate the size of the beam. We have aperture here just in below the condenser lens, first condenser lens which can actually make the spot size very precisely. So one can change this aperture and set at different level depending on the intensity level of what you we want. Then you have aperture in the objective lens column which can allow us to select the, the basically the whether we can we want to image using transmitted beam or we want to image using a diffracted beam or we want to do high resolution electron microscopy which I will show just within few minutes time. Then you also have a aperture in the SAD or called selected diffraction. Basically if you want to select a particular region of sample and do the diffraction analysis you need to use and this aperture. There are actually uh, three or four apertures depending on the, uh, the kind of uh, investigation you would like to do. One can select these apertures and then get a diffraction information. Remember in electron microscope diffraction pattern forms on the back focal plane of the objective lens. So depending on the, uh, the, 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 the your wish whether to use the uh, diffraction pattern or the image you can actually energize the intermediate lens more or less and to get either the diffraction pattern on the skin or the image and that is normally routinely done by the microscope system we do not need to bother we just sit in the, on the microscope and do it. Other than that this microscope has basically uh, you know to make the uh, vacuum system clean we need to have a liquid nitrogen cooled uh, setup where there is some, uh, the uh, liquid nitrogen chamber which can take care of all the contamination on the sample because most of the samples will have 
contamination not only when the elect not only that when the electron beam falls on a sample it can generate contamination those contamination cannot be allowed to go to the vacuum system or it can actually create uh, the the system backup system uh, to be you know contaminated so to get it anti contamination free we have anti contamination device like a liquid nitrogen cool trap which can take care of all the uh, all these uh, contaminations so this liquid nitrogen tank needs to be refilled uh, intermittently to uh, get a very good vacuum inside the column of the microscope well there are several attachment to the microscope the first one is uh, this uh, attachment which is known as energy dispersive spectroscopy or edax which is again uh, basically very ultra thin window edax so uh, we can use the as the electron falls and i discussed in the last class it generate x rays and this x rays can be used to basically qualitatively and quantitatively uh, determine a particular electron and uh, element also figure out amount of the metri uh, that particular element present in the sample so this is done by the edax which will be which i already been discussed in your material characterization course so i will also discuss uh, after what's uh, called sometime in the course also another important thing which you have is basically here is known as hard if or high angle annular detector which is sitting over there this detector is basically mean to get j contrast images as i discussed in the class the electrons which as it falls on a sample very thin transparent sample it get diffracted and diffraction per power of the uh, you know material depends on kind of element present in the material if the sample contains very heavy element they will diffract strongly on the other hand light elements like lithium aluminum silicon as compared to palladium bismuth they will diffract very slowly so therefore we can actually get this uh, different diffracting uh, di different uh, okay we can actually get the diffraction beams which are coming from a sample collected by this detector at an at an annular space or at an angular space from the transmitted beam and by using this detector one can actually see the actual you know jet contrast image on the sample this is just like in a scanning electron microscope as we use backscatter imaging mode but here we don't use the same technology or same concept like in scanning electron microscope whether we are using a diffraction contrast imaging which is uh, basically governed by the atomic number of the element so that is attached to this microscope other than that one can have other many other things which includes energy loss spectroscopy analysis which can be attached at the bottom of these uh, microscopes or one can have different video ports to do in situ microscope remember we don't have in situ microscopic stage here but one can attach this to this microscope in situ microscopy means we can put the sample inside the microscope then you can heat or cool it down and observe the sample what what are the kind of changes happening in the sample and this can be recorded in a video by attaching a video port or this can be recorded in normal mode also which i am going to discuss in a next time so therefore depending on our use we can attach diff different kinds of things in the microscopes one can actually even attach other things like uh, <coughs> people sometimes use uh, what's called the cold stage microscopy where the holder itself is a cold stage and this kind of stage is actually used for biological sample viewing so depending on the use or depending on the need a transmitted electron microscope can be used for any purposes now as far as the recording is concerned because images needs to be recorded or the, the whatever you are viewing on the screen needs to be recorded earlier days people used to record using a photographic plates just like a normal photographic plates we do but these plates are very big and long so they they can be pushed at the at the place at the just below this uh, the viewing screen and because transmitted electron microscope has a very large depth of field so therefore whatever will be focused on the screen can can be uh, assumed to be focused on the photographic plate and once this photographic plates are exposed by the electron beam they can be just developed and the images can be obtained but those days are over now normally nowadays we use a digital camera which is there at the bottom of these things this is basically digital camera from garten incorporation and this digital camera actually very sensitive to electron beam 
so depending on the, uh, the, the imaging conditions we can actually collect these images directly on the digital camera and then view it on the screen ok so depending on that so I can so show you one such image which is we have collected in the in the microscope so you can see here there is an image which is collected by this from this microscope so there are many features so one can actually do this image collection directly from the camera and camera technology has improved extensively for the over the, over the time scale as per the resolution of the camera sensitivity of the camera also the exposure to the camera all has been developed to the optimum level and nowadays we can have a very high resolution camera which can even grab uh, the high resolution images to the exact resolution what you see on the screen so but still many people use both the imaging systems and uh, if, uh, for day to day life then another kind of imaging system which has been developed nowadays which is used is called photographic plates which are sensitive to the light so those photographic plates can be used for recording and then image can be transferred on a uh, on a computer from the photographic plate and then these images can be erased or the photographic plates uh, the memory of the photographic plate can be erased and they can be reused they are very sensitive to the lights but they are not uh, used for the normal microscopes only for very exceptional cases where you want to record diffraction patterns which are energy filtered that can be done well that is basically the basic feature of electron microscope here but normally in electron microscope there are many other instrument behind as you can uh, you may not be able to see from the from the video but there will be UPS the animated power supply that is needed and uh, there will be chillers because these lenses which are basically used to image uh, the, the uh, uh, of the sample uh, in, in the microscopes need to be water cooled because they are electromagnetic lenses and uh, this water cooling is done by chiller which are normally kept outside these microscope rooms and then you can also have sample cleaning system before you put the sample one can clean the sample using a plasma cleaner nowadays we have we also have a plasma cleaner which will show you just within after just I finish the discussion here so using the plasma cleaner one can clean the sample very nicely so that one can get a very nice region of the sample and view it well uh, the these are all background things what one needs to have for a microscope so that's why other than that the microscopes needs to be kept in a very uh, neat environment free from any kind of vibration free from any kind of magnetic field also free from noise uh, as probably we will see uh, sometime down the line uh, if I have the opportunity I will show a microscope which is the best with the best possible resolution called Titan which will be installed in our in the IIT Kanpur in a normal Titan microscope even the person who is sitting in the front of the microscope cannot speak a word or even cannot uh, in, uh, cannot even you know we on by doing so you can actually create the problem in the image because the vibration which is generated by that can actually reduce the resolution of the microscopes that is why those microscopes are remotely controlled you can insert the sample then go out to a separate room and remotely control so but here that is not the case because the resolution of this microscope is not that so in those cases not only the microscopes are to be kept in a very clean and neat environment but also the environment has to be free from all kinds of noises even the noise from the air conditioner can create problem so these are the these are the way high resolution microscopy has developed over the time scale from 2006 onwards the titan microscopes has come up in this world and this has changed the whole concept of electron microscopy all throughout in the class I also saw the images of the microscopy ok now let us uh, switch on the beam on the microscope and just see that light of the vision so I just take on this chair and just switch on the beam here by using the computer which you may not be able to see and once I switch on the beam once I switch on the beam in the microscope I can clearly see that the fluorescent scheme lights up uh, that means I have the beam uh, uh, aligned in the microscopes remember the for normal microscope halogen microscopy the electron beam needs to be aligned properly 
So I just then bring the sample in, in the microscope color into the field of view and then I will just set up the microscope. I will not show you the basic features of the microscopic investigations. We have already a sample inserted into the microscope and I am going to show you most of the things on the screen. So, uh, so that you can observe because seeing here is always a difficult task on the screen this is a small arena. So, I just uh, what I did is basically I put the sample in and focus the beam and just uh, put the apertures both the objective aperture and the and the selected apertures using that I can form a biotful image which I will show you in a moment's time. So, please view it on the screen here. So, you can see basically the image on the on a screen. So, this is a typical white field image in electron microscope where the field of the V is bright and uh, one can see that uh, there are different features on the on the microscope on the sam on the image. Some of the features actually tells each feature will tell us some contrast uh, basically this kind of image is based on the diffraction contrast in the electron microscopes. As the electron falls on the sample the it undergoes diffraction. So, by using this the diffraction information we can form different kind of images. So, the first kind of image is formed as a known as a bright field image in which the transmitted beam or the photo scatter beam is used uh, to image that. So, whatever intensity information is there in the photo scatter image will be seen on this on this image. On the other hand if we use a uh, diffracted beam then we can see the informations regarding a dark field. 
the most important thing in a microscope when somebody sits is the diffraction pattern because diffraction pattern is basically formed by the diffraction of the of the crystals in the sample uh, during as the electron falls on a sample so electron getting diffracted can lead to this kind of diffraction patterns and they contain all information regarding the sample uh, type regarding the, the features within the sample whether there are defects or not or not even that depending on the orientation of the crystals this diffraction can be changed. So that is why the diffraction pattern is, is something which is known as the most important thing in a micro, in, in a transmission electron microscopes. By using the diffraction pattern subsequently one can generate either a white field image or a dark field image or even one can use this as a highly saturated electron microscopy. So this is a very uh, powerful uh, process so that one can actually analyze almost all features which are present in the sample at the, at the fine scale to the level of Armstrong or some Armstrong nowadays possible one can actually gather information. That is the reason I have told you in the last lecture or this lecture that transmission electron microscope is basically a versatile equipment can be used for many many uh, kinds of analysis of the sample. So let me just now uh, go back to the microscope and try to figure out a diffraction pattern and uh, this. So this is very uh, in the microscope very typical they cannot one day nowadays everybody grab the images on the computer screen. You do not come into picture you should they will see it you see that. Yes, so <laughs> you are lucky also. Okay, so we can actually gather a diffraction pattern by using the select area aperture, select the particular region of sample and this is one such diffraction pattern you can see on the screen. So uh, diffraction pattern has a transmitted beam or the forward scatter beam and diffracted beams sitting on the sample say different places. So if I put objective aperture here on the transmitted beam then I can basically a grid the white field image the one which I shown you shown you there okay here. Now if I select any of these diffracted beams and put the aperture in the in the diffracted beam obviously aperture is diffracted I can get the dark field image. On the other hand if I select the large number of diffracted spot along with the transmitter spot by using a bigger object aperture I can get, get basically I can make them interfere and get the interference pattern which is nothing but high resolution image. Nowadays one even do not need to do that because the lenses in the orbital lens are so good actually it generates the, the, uh, the high resolution image in a very high magnification. Just a minute.
so this is a dark field image which can be actually obtained by using one of those diffracted spots in the microscopes and uh, it, it will light up the regions which are diffracting strongly in the microscopes. So this dark field image can be obtained even in uh, that is called sc uh, scanning transmission electron microscopy uh, stem mode also and the dark field image in stem mode will give you again some kind of jet contrast uh, if we use hard if okay in a in a dark field that is called high angle angular dark field image which can be done so uh, routinely in the microscope nowadays but one needs to insert the this 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 uh, this particular detector inside the column to gather the information so other than that one can actually select uh, in, uh, these uh, any of these regions of the sample and and then do the uh, any of the regions of the sample here and do the spectroscopic analysis using the EDAX or one can use another law spectroscopic uh, features to uh, basically do the uh, composition analysis of the sample but those are very involved techniques so them in the microscope requires a uh, lot of time so I will not be able to show you in, in front of in, in the microscopes but I will discuss you in the class in subsequent lectures when I discuss about the yields and the stem uh, I will show you the basic features I and mean, I will show you some examples of our own study which we have done in the, uh, in the process of our own research even using this microscopes or maybe some other microscopes which I am going to show in the class. Okay. Modern day electron microscope requires sample preparation. Sample preparation is the one of the biggest bottleneck of the getting high resolution microscopic images. So that is why sample preparation technique has seen a sea change over the time. So I will not be able to discuss exactly different sample preparation procedures but of late even after TM sample is perforated and uh, thinned down to the electron transparency level the sample surface can have oxides or other contaminations to make it contamination free this uh, for the normally for the analytical microscopic purpose also for high resolution purpose the uh, machine which is used is known as a plasma lacuna it generates the plasma using a gas or gas mixture like hydrogen argon oxygen inside this uh, machine and we can actually load the sample in a TM uh, sample holder and inside this one and clean it using the plasma. This is very fast and very uh, uh, what's called uh, authentic technique to get sample contamination free. This is very important for many analysis as I said not only high resolution but also composition analysis and also in STEM because in the STEM we use a focused beam or a converged beam rather not a focused converged beam. And as if the sample has contaminations, the converged beam will interact with the contamination and sample will be basically more contaminated as the investigation goes on. That is why in all normal days all the microscopic samples needs to be first cleaned in a plasma kinar before you can inside inside the TM column. That also saves the vacuum system of the TM column. So this has uh, been a new feature. In fact many people nowadays use something known as a nano mill where even after, uh, after the normal thinning of the sample, the sample is cleaned by using very low energy argon beams in a nano mill very precisely so the surface oxide layers are removed and uh, very controlled manner and so that we can get a uh, actual high resolution image in the microscope. So um, following that this machine can actually remove all the further contamination at all there but nano mill is very ex expensive very few people in this world can buy it so we don't have so many people in this world actually use the plasma cleaner to clean the sample okay